Those three things for Rob are very important, and he's an excellent speaker as well. So I'm just going to give you a plug. Anybody out there that needs a speaker to motivate, Please, encourage, and inspire? Up. There you go, Rob Cook. Um. Jealousy and hater get you on my bad side. Call me innovative teacher, pastor, brother, preacher, Dr. White. Lab. Time, but it was easy to kind of let go of certain things I weren't in control of, mm. and it was easy to navigate. And I felt free, like just free, and that's the freest I've ever felt while I was in there. Ladies and gentlemen, you are in for a treat today. We're going all the way across the water to Fars Gate, London, with my man. Omar Wilson from Beyond Recovery. What's up, my guy? What's up, man, Rob? What's up? How you doing, man? I'm all good, you know. I'm all good. I'm just relaxed, calm, just been chilling, reading all day. So, yeah, I'm just relaxed, man. Man, I'm going to tell you this. Uh, I think I'll, I've never been more jealous on my <laughs> own show than interviewing you and Derek with that damn UK swag tone demeanor come you know coming on the show sounded like idris ilba somebody like man why don't y'all going on somewhere with that shit man like you know coming in all smooth tone and stuff man you you know shout out my guy Derek mason oh, man. <laughs> so for real man what's going on man what i mean beyond recovery is doing a lot so let me let me kind of shape it let's start just with with Omar at the beginning, right? Let's just let's just tell the story. We'll start with Omar at the beginning and kind of walk me through um, coming in contact with the principles and then now. And we'll, we'll go from there, man. But yeah, let's... So, uh, let me build the images for you a little bit. So, from a young age, I was diagnosed with ADHD and dyslexia. Okay. So, ADHD is just like hyperactivity and dyslexia is like learning difficulties numbers and letters and all of that so with that head um i come from a single parent home so it was just my mom and me my older sister and my younger brother and we lived in manor park and when we moved there i didn't know anybody there so it was just us and when i went to certain clubs and things i saw how the area was and how people was and Everybody had somebody to protect them, if that made sense. Yeah, yeah, Everybody yeah. All the brothers or cousins or family members, or I would hear family names, and I didn't really have that. So I kind of, I was scared in a way because I wanted to protect my little brother and I didn't want to be bullied. So I kind of became that monster that fit into everybody else and everybody started to like me and I became that guy. So when they would see my little brother, they'd be like, no, 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 that's, that's, that's Wilson's little brother. Mm. And, and that way I thought I was protecting him. So I kind of became that person. But um, throughout that journey and becoming that person, I met this guy and I was young and he was like, he was uh, two, three years older than me. And he was cool and popular, but he didn't do anything everybody else I thought was cool was doing. So like all the, the, the smoking cigarettes and smoking weed and drinking and girls and he weren't really doing all of that, but he still was popular. Do you know what I mean? He never done crime and he never done that, but everybody liked him. So I kind of gravitated towards him and he kind of showed me the ropes and there was a guy that used to try to bully me and take my ball all the time and he stopped that he put that to a stop and I kind of saw how he'd done that without violence and just spoke to the guy and this was all at a young age and I, I really admired him so after school on the rough day of school I would go and would chat and would hang out and that was for a couple of years and then when I was about 13 he was killed he was about 50 yeah two years he was killed the way he was killed was just, it bugged me. It, it bugged me because after a day of cinema, him and a couple of friends, he walked all of them home. And then 
he was on his way home and somebody thought he was somebody else and he got stabbed a couple of times and he died from that. Now, in my mind frame, he was good. Mm. No chance. So I'm thinking, what? That that's not really an option for me now. Yeah. You know what I mean, and with no guidance, that 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 goodness weren't really an option for me. Even though I felt it and I liked it, it weren't really an option because I thought, like, wow, that's that's not how you survive in this environment. How you survive, and it's like, wow. So from then, and everything, my mom, my mom kind of struggled with the money, and so being the oldest boy, I kind of thought. Uh, with this with this energy that I've got and with the friends that I've made and whatever they're doing, I can do it as well. And I began to sell drugs from a young age and I've done that for a long time, a really long time. But throughout that journey, I did try to do other things. So throughout that, I, I, I went to college and got a couple um, little things, but I was still selling drugs. And then I went to, uh, I got um, my youth work level three because I wanted to do youth work, but I just, I was more focused on money. Money kind of tainted me at this this point in life. That's what led me to prison. And to be honest, I'm lucky that that led me to prison other than anything else I did. Yeah. But that led me to prison. And during that sentence, I was the same. The same person I was outside, I was the same inside. I'm not aggressive, but I'm I'm very bubbly and cool. I'm a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. I'm provoked. So I get along with most people. And I was just the same guy that carried on with selling inside and just I didn't really see no options for anything else apart from when I come out, how do I not get caught? <laughs> Okay, and what year is this? Put me in the time frame. What year is this happening? I'm a bit rubbish with time frames, but I'll say about 2017. Okay, got it. About 2017, okay. And I was just in there being a menace, but being my first time in prison, I told the person to just, I had this um kind of person that would just look after a group of people. And I told them to put me on every single course only because I didn't want to be in my cell 24 seven. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that was my, I, I didn't know how prison was. I've just heard about it. So I went on every course. I went on alcohol anonymous, um, NA, um, all these drug courses and all these other things. And they were just repetitive, just repetitive stuff. Like why is drugs bad? Because it, it hurts your body are oh, correct and simple things like that and to be honest i was like the class clown man i made everybody laugh That's <laughs> I, I, always, I always laughed in the situation because it was just i don't know that's my thing to do and um yeah then it came to this beyond recovery and i was already quite i didn't really like i had judgment about the name only because of the big the recovery bit yeah, because yeah. no one thinks that they need recovery or they're broken or they're, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We only kind of see the, well, not we, I only kind of see that for addicts at the time. I was like, only addicts need recovery. And recovery, recovery, yeah. What's beyond recovery? Anyway, I went to this group preparing to be the class clown. And it was just, everything was just different and weird because these, we had these ladies and they're white ladies and they're just smiling and you go, oh. <laughs> that's mama J then, right? <laughs> that's mama J and them. And she, they got coffees and teas, their tea bags, sugar, loads of sugar and all that. And it's just all out. And in prison, everybody's taking a bit of that. Do you know what I mean? Everybody yeah. coming in the room for tea and leaving. And they were just so friendly and open. Yeah, come in, come in, come in. So that was a bit weird at first. And I'm ready to be the class clown again because I just, you know what I mean? I, I, I want to have a laugh. The more I laugh, yeah. the more my time just passes. Yeah. You know what I mean? If I can have all my teachers email in right now to the show, they would tell you that I was class clown as well. So that's why I'm vibing. I get it. I get it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so this, the class kind of continued and 
what I really remember is she went into this story about um about her son, right? And basically, she borrowed him money, and he was meant to pay her back at um a agreed date. And they come to the date and he never paid her back. So she said she was mad and she's furious because she needed the money and stuff. And then she kind of just threw it to the room and said, like, Ra, like, who, who made me mad in this situation? So obviously everybody's in the room and everybody kind of knows the answer already. And it's like, what? Well, and everybody's kind of like saying, that it's your son, it's your son. Like, obviously he's meant to pay you, should have paid you, it's your son. And now everybody's giving her advice on how, how to deal with him. <laughs> how to get her money back. Yeah. Get her money back and everyone's just into it. And then she's like, the room kind of quiets. And then somebody else is like, how then? Like, is, do you know what I mean? It's, it's your son, right? And she's like, no, it's, it's her. So in me personally, I had that, this lady's silly, man. What's going on? Do you know what I mean? I thought, oh, this lady's, this, she's silly, like she's lost it. Of course it's her son. Mm. And she began to explain about how she saw it and if she didn't need the money and the different circumstances and the thought process. And from that day, I realised now that it was just pure curiosity I had. Yeah. into that because it was like it's, it's like right now if i tell you two and two is not four you're gonna say how how <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah 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 that <laughs> conflicts with everything i've ever been taught that's right so I'm, I'm, I'm i'm just in that state of curiosity and at that time i never realized how important curiosity is mm. and what curiosity is and from, it's that something kind of opened in me that day because I felt like, one, she, I'm putting on this mask, right? Because every most people in prison, they put on a mask. And I put on this mask and this facade that I'm happy, I'm laughing, da, da, da. And I felt like they could see through that, mm -hmm. even though I had it on. So it's like, it felt like, why am I wearing all this face makeup and they can see through it? Yeah. I, they, it just made no sense wearing it. Yeah. And then the second thing was, it's not like they, it's not like we was differentiated in a class and they asked us what crime we did or who we, it was just straight communication. And another thing, sorry, that I forgot to mention in the beginning is she said, you don't have to write anything down. You don't have to, um, she said, you don't have to, you don't have to even get it. Um, she said, just listen for a feeling. What? <laughs> <laughs> that get everybody. That's the sentence that get everybody. Listen for the feeling. Like, wait, what? <laughs> and it's, it, it's that, what? So, it, it, yeah, it's against everything that you kind of know as the teaching or classroom strategy or all of that. So it kind of just ticked my curiosity and I was in. And throughout that journey, man, I, it was weird because... I felt, I felt myself like, I, I consider myself a hard-headed person, right? Okay. So okay. if you told me fire's hot, I would say, what, this fire? And put my hand in there. And, oh, and then, oh, it is, it is hot. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've got, to, I've got to see if it's, and so that's the same way I was. It was like, okay. And it kind of slowly, little things kind of quit. Like there was one time where, I must have called my, my girlfriend from the phones and she didn't answer. And straight away I'm in my head, what's going on? Where is she? Is she all right? Is she not all right? Is she doing good? Is she not doing good? Is she? And my head is all over the place. And normally from that place there, we're straight arguing. It don't matter what's yeah. going like, on. Yes. On argue mode because of my thought process. But at that time, it wasn't my thought process. It was her. Yeah. And... One time I kind of just thought, you know what? I built up the whole thought process and then I thought, you know what? Let me just not. Let me just not, because we're just going to argue again. Do you know what I mean? And I didn't. And the conversation kind of went a different way. Yeah. Just, 
I weren't on fight mode, you know what I mean? I weren't on argument mode. I just was on, do you know what? Let me just hear what you got to say. Yeah, yeah. I respond from there instead of where I think I'm at. And that was like the first one. And then from there, I was still a bit naughty and, do you know what I mean? And challenging. And I, I did a lot of basic time where they take away your TV and your you come out an hour after everybody else and everything's shorter. And I did a lot of that because I was a bit naughty. And one time they took my TV and stuff and Jacqueline gave me these books and they were quite, one was quite big and, and that's daunting for me. A book this big, <laughs> I'm not reading it. <laughs> I'm taking them and I know I'm not going to read them. But, over the course of like two weeks, obviously I knew a little bit, but over the course of two weeks, I kind of taught myself to read and write. And I enjoyed it. Yeah. So, what? <laughs> <laughs> crazy because I always hated reading because I thought I couldn't read and I couldn't do it and, and I didn't want to do it. So I thought, oh, that, I don't like it. That's not for me. But in that cell, over them, that basic time, I found out that I love reading. And I read the Modelo, and I love that book. That's like one of my favorite books now. Yeah, yeah. And I read a couple books, and I was writing letters, and I kind of just brushed up all of that. And it was weird for me because over the last, that from before that, the last twenty something years, I told myself I couldn't do that. Teachers have tried to teach me and everything, and I told myself I got these things. I can't do it. Yeah. I was able to just do it in that space and time when I was ready. Yeah. And from then it just progressed and I went back for more and I became peer mentor and I was just helping out and I just kept I just kept going to loads of their classes, man. Good classes. Well, let yeah. me ask you this. What kind of talk to me a little bit more about the feeling that was happening inside of you when you were starting to walk into those areas that for so long you told yourself couldn't be done. Like, what was it, what was literally going through your mind reading a piece of a book and enjoying it or writing a letter and enjoying it, knowing you had said for so long, you can't do it? You know what, it's, it's I can't explain it, but a silly feeling. Yeah. <laughs> feeling where you look up into the stars and just think what you know when you're looking for your glasses but they're on your head yeah <laughs> i like that. that that feeling right there because you searched the whole house you turned the whole house upside down but they were right with you like yeah. there. right with you and it's that feeling right there that you just get when you feel these things yeah i love that so you you find your glasses on your head, right? And now we off to peer mentoring and kind of walk me through peer mentoring to your release from prison and what happened next. So for the peer mentoring, it was I was just kind of helping people see, just adding a different view. I didn't really feel like I knew too much or I was actually I didn't even feel like I was meant to get that peer mentor position. Mm. I had to shut okay. up a few times. <laughs> okay. I up a lot of times because I liked the feed and I liked the group. I liked everything. So I showed up a lot of times. And I just managed to get a peer mentor t-shirt. So I was there even more. And I thought I was good, if that made sense. Because in prison, there's not much to do with. Yeah. Meaning... You don't have to pay rent. You don't yeah. have to. No expectations. <laughs> People didn't count it you out. So you don't have to fit anything socially. You, you know, the guards are doing. Yeah. Yeah. You're just, you're just you. there. Yeah. They feed you. They provide everything. Everything's there. They unlock you. So you, there's nothing you really have to do much. Apart from yeah. So it was, I didn't realize at the time, but it was easy to kind of let go of certain things I weren't in control of. Mm. and it was easy to navigate and I felt free like just free and that's the freest I've ever felt while I was in there and I feel like as soon as I came out 
that's when I kind of, I, it's like I started re-downloading things again. Yeah. Because I didn't connect with Beyond Recovery until at least about just under a year later of leaving prison. Okay. I thought that, like, do you know what I mean? I thought like, yeah, I've got this thing. I'm good. I don't need that I'm good. So I come out now and there was little challenges of like finding a place to stay because I wanted to get a place to stay, but the prison wanted me to stay an extra three months to help me with that. And I'm like, do you know what? I'd rather not. <laughs> I'd rather not. Appreciate your help, but I'm going to be good. <laughs> yeah. I left and my mum let me stay there and I was with my missus at the time and we were just trying to find a place to stay, no money and it's running through my head like I know how to make money, but I don't really want to make money like that because... Yeah. I mean, it just didn't make sense to take risks like that. Yeah. Do you know? And I was just going through a lot of things like that. And my friends, they, they know I'm out now. So it's a couple of them, they're offering me stuff like, take that, get back on your feet. And I'm finding it hard to decline, but I decline them. And I'm just going through this, oh, there's a lot of things to do now. <laughs> I need to yeah. do I need to get a job. I need, oh, I need to get my license and everything's just, I need to get my mum rent and everything's just came down. I felt like it all came at once. So I tried to struggle for it, struggle for it, struggle for it. And then it's like a random day. I just remembered that there's open arms over there. <laughs> mm. so I, just, I gave um, Jacqueline a call. And uh, funny enough, they was having like a little meeting in central London. So I went over there and just started reconnecting with them. And I felt like it was a breath of fresh air. But the main thing that she alluded me to is it's not, it's not them. Yeah. Giving me that feeling. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's what I take or from the scene or from whatever I'm creating yeah, to yeah. It. but it's in you yeah you and brought it yeah it's in you you brought it there and that's what i got confused because i thought why am i feeling certain ways when i know this yeah i wasn't allowed to be upset because i know this so i wasn't allowed to struggle or feel pain because i know this free principle stuff yeah then i realized i just had it all wrong yeah you know what i mean it's not something that you know it's something that we are <laughs> like we are this explains people. it yeah yeah we are the free principles so it's nothing that i've i've obtained or i've brought is that and i feel like that's when my discovery began mm. okay. because from there that's when i started hearing different things about it and uh, different people talk about it and different opinions different views and then i went to nottingham prison and to see the way certain guys responded to me, just being on the other side and just by my swag and the way I look and the way I'm standing there, they know that I'm not anybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How is he standing right there? Yeah. So they, they, they come and they talk and the same with Derek and they talk to us and they want to know Wow, how like just how are you explain here? Explain it, yeah. Explain it. Help me understand. That's it. And yeah. from that curiosity, then you can start dripping a little seed in like, you know what, we run this, da -da 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 -da, come to this group, da -da. and I realized without that curiosity, there's no point telling anybody anything. No. As soon as that curiosity opens, it's, you can plant a little seed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, it it, it, and me and Derek talked about this um, on our episode about our environment being a crab eating crab type in the barrel type thing is if you were trying to crawl up, somebody was pulling you back down because if we all in this mess together, it seems more manageable in a sense. Right. But somehow, some way I got to the top of the barrel and peeked over and saw a whole new world. You know, it's kind of like. Oh, wait a minute. Now, wait, wait, you know. And so when I go talk to people who knew how I grew up or people who were in the military or people who were in PTSD counseling with me or substance abuse counseling, all of that, and look at the smile on my face now, they'd be like, 
bro, add some up for me. Like, what happened? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. what's going on? 100%. Like, Cause it's like, it's not even fake. Like they don't even, you know how normally when you're trying to do good around that area, it's like, oh man, you faking that shit. You, you ain't, you, you know what I mean? I ain't even getting hit with your fake. They coming all full flesh to, bro, what happened? What changed? Like, what did you, yes. What did you see? Like, like, it's not even, it's so funny because for so many years, I, at that mass thing you were talking about, I love when you said that because when my mask was on and I felt people could see it, I basically put on more makeup. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I get a new car. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I get a, I, 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 I do something, a materialistic, extravagant type thing to so-called add more makeup and get that focus to that other than the suffering that I'm having within myself. Yeah. You know, so, so yeah, I, I absolutely love the way you explained that was like, they looking at you and Derek like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that's the only question you got. Like, can't even comprehend it. Yeah, yeah. I and love the, that, man. The thing about it is that it's it's a feeling that is familiar, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So it's like I've always felt that feeling, but never went into it. And it's like, oh. Oh, that, oh, that. And it brings me, it, oh, it's like, it's like it brought me back to certain times in my life where yeah. wisdom was and wisdom, wisdom was. And oh, I was like, oh, there. And oh, it was. And it, <laughs> like you had a family reunion seeing all, like, oh, oh. Literally, like, whoa. <laughs> Even that time when, and it's little things where wisdom spoke and I just ran over it. And I'm like, oh. That was the wisdom right there. Yeah, that's and how I missed it, right there. Yeah, that's how I missed it right there. And it's like they come as extra lessons from the. It's crazy. Right? Oh right? yeah, no, no, I, I, bro, yeah. I get that because oh, once, extra, yeah. you, once you look back at it and you see that wisdom spoken, you didn't listen. You also still have the circumstances that happened to you as a result of not listening. So it almost begins to reinforce to you the importance of listening when you start seeing the whisper was there from the very beginning. So when you start looking at the whole life over, you're like, wait, man, if I'd have been paying attention or had had known this, you know? <laughs> That's it, that what would have been possible? You know, but then at the same time, what I love about it is regardless, I know the day. So whatever was possible then is possible right now. Exactly. You exactly. know, so that's what that's what I love a, a, about this understanding. So, man, let's do this. Let's um, let's talk a little bit about this award that Beyond Recovery um, just won for the amazing work that they do. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up and go from there. So um, COVID happened. Yeah. And our main thing was going into prisons and talking to people face to face because that's that's where it's at. Face to face, talk, know everything's real. And we wasn't allowed to do that due to COVID. And just quick thinking, we just pulled together a meeting and throwing ideas across the table. And we came up with these distance learning packs. And it's funny because <laughs> when you're trying to deliver the three principles, you often think a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you think a lot and start contradicting yourself. And would that work? And you start judging and you start, yeah. you start using all of those emotions and feelings and creations to think about what it might do. Yeah. And we was doing that for a little while and then, we kind of just had that conversation that like everybody just stopped that. <laughs> just stop. Do you know what I mean? Just stop. Yeah. And just put love into it, basically. Do you know what I mean? Let's just put love into it. Yeah. We put love into these free um, distance learning packs and we uh, got some funding for that to go on the prison radio, to advertise those packs. 
And yeah, we we, was, we started handing out those packs. We was getting phone calls and giving those packs in and out of certain prisons and a lot of prisons around the UK. Oh, and wow. a lot of good feedback. And I feel like that's how we won the award because we just fought on our feet still for the people. Just yeah. whatever. And even though we didn't know if the love would be portrayed in this writing, it was. Yeah. <laughs> I had the feedback in the in the packs, you could tell that, wow. Yeah. Wow. You could tell the individual on the other side of this pack that wrote, their wisdom is awoken. And it's just beautiful yeah. reading these packs, man. You can feel it coming through. As yeah. they're reading, just the way you put the words on the paper, the things you point to, you start seeing real quickly. It really isn't about the words. It's all in about that feeling. And then they, they that feeling hits them that there's no judgment here. That feeling hits them that I'm expressing to you from a place of love. And then that, for them, it sparks that curiosity like we, we said. And, and once they get curious, oh, man, game on. That's it, literally. Game on, you know, so cool. I appreciate that. And again, shout out, man, Beyond Recovery, Mama J, Derek Mason. Who else over there we want to shoot out? Who else? we got Papa Olos. we got Gary, we got Kate in the background. we got, we got a lot of volunteers. A lot of them. Well, everybody over at Beyond Recovery, Inside Alliance, all those places that are in um, the the systems, the prison systems, trying to to – Point people to well-being. We love you. We thank you for that work. So, Omar, man, we we here at the point where the whole community is listening to you, man. You know, uh, put your plat on stage, plant your flag right here. What is it, you know, if everybody was listening that you would want to say to them? First of all, I want to say I appreciate guys like you, man. I, I appreciate guys like you, Rob, because you're out here and you're just spreading this knowledge and this thing to a wider community and I love that. I appreciate that, man. Good day long, man. And for the community, I would love to say, I always thought in my head that it took two to tangle, but I realise now it takes one. And where I'm from, I've been waiting for people to do things and start things so I can help. And But I realise that it starts with me because I'm still in the same community that I, I, I was selling drugs in, but I'm now trying to do different stuff. I went to the community centers and I've been to all the um, couple of schools and I've spoke to a couple of people and we're trying to get some things together in the community just so people could realize their own well-being, yeah. their own resilience. Because where I'm from, I know that peer pressure is a big killer. And people want to do things. And I just want to show the boys around here that ego's not real. And everything is a commodity. You don't have to go and sell drugs or sell this to have something. Everything's a commodity. You can be a salesman. You can be an entrepreneur. You don't have to waste your life on these like, silly little things that you think are cool now. And then when you grow up, you're going to realize that it's not cool. I would just love everyone to just not be scared of the experience. But um, yeah, no, I appreciate the space once again. Unfit, unfit,